What's up, everybody? It's your favorite urban missionary with Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Man, I'm excited to be here today, man. Uh, came for one reason, but you know how God does sometimes. I came to see my brother, but then uh, he asked me, uh, you know, to come give an encouraging word. And so, man, uh, I've been thinking these past couple of days, man, about one topic, and that's uh, being hated on and your haters. And a lot of times, uh, especially in this generation, a lot of times when people are being hated on or, or they have haters, they internalize it like they're doing something wrong. But I'm here to tell you today, man, the word that I have for you is that you'll rise above the hate. You're going to rise above the hate so much that when you look to your left or your right, you're going to start looking down and realizing your haters are gone because you're going to rise above the hate. I'm reminded of a guy named Noah during his time man, there was a lot of turmoil and evil in the land and God was like man I'm just going to destroy it but uh, the word of the Lord in Genesis 6 says says that God found favor in Noah I want you to know man number one that you got favor with God when you stay close to him obey him um, begin to search deeper for him grow more spiritually you get a favor that's better than money. You get favor when something that should be happening bad around everybody else is not going to happen bad around you. And so Noah found favor in God and God gave him some specific instructions. He told him rain was coming and Noah didn't understand what rain was and and how it was going to meticulate and, and just how much destruction was going to do. But he knew he had favor with God and he knew that he was going to listen to God. And so God told him to get some lumber, specific type of lumber. He told him to get specific type of tools and begin to build this massive boat. Now, I want you to know that as he was dragging the lumber to the spot where he was going to build the boat, man, people were laughing at him. They were calling him crazy, but he knew he was going to rise above the hate. I want you to understand is as he was sweating hard every day, working from day to night, and he's trying to figure out what is this boat going to look like because it wasn't small. It was very massive. He knew he was going to rise above the hay. Every day they teased him as he was nailing wood in and he was putting planks right where they specifically supposed to be. People were laughing at him. They were teasing him, just doing a lot of reckless things. But if he just held on, he knew he'd rise above the hay. Now, now, here's the beautiful thing. The Bible says when he finished the boat he didn't stop there but he went to get two of every clean I mean two of every unclean animal and four of every unclean animal so people are looking at him why are you gathering all these things and they're teasing him and they're probably even thinking like some of these animals that he's bringing are going to turn on and kill him but I'm here to tell you Noah was going to rise above the hate Noah began to let the animals in he, he went and got his family and his sons and their wives they all came in and this is what was miraculously happened. There was no rope to pull the door. There was no hinge. There was no button to press to make the door close. It said God closed the door. I want you to understand it was a perfect fit because Noah did it exactly the way God told him to do it. Look, there are some things that God is telling you to do and you got to do it exactly the way he tells you to do it because when he closed that door, and begin to rise you up, man, them haters ain't going to be able to get in. The danger is not going to be able to get in. There was no such thing as waterproof, airtight type of vessels back in those days. Yet, when God closed the door, the door became airtight and it became waterproof. The rain comes down. Everybody's laughing because he's on a boat in dry land. Everybody's laughing, but the rain starts coming faster and faster and faster and faster to the point that they now you see in the water rising. People are getting nervous and they screaming and they're trying to figure out what's going on. But, but Noah and the animals and his family was just chilling in the boat. All of a sudden. People were running up the hills. Slowly. The ark was rising. I'm here to tell you they were banging on the boat. The ark started rising. See, all them haters that was making them feel like he was crazy, feel like he was messed up in the head for building something that had no reason to be built there because there was no water around it. Now they're starting to see that God really called them to do it. I'm here to encourage you today. You got something that only you can do. Only, only you can do. 
but it seems crazy. It seems idiotic. It seems like people are going to make fun of you. But I'm here to tell you, follow the directions exactly like God has told you. And watch this. When it's all said and done, them haters are going to be running to you. But like, no, you're going to rise above the hate. We know how the story goes. Everybody drowns and Noah's in the ark for 40 days. And I want you to hear you understand Noah's obedience just didn't save him. Noah's obedience just didn't save his uh, children and their wives. Noah's obedience saved all animal kind. I'm going to say that again. Every animal would have went extinct over that destruction. But because Noah's obedience, you get to go to a zoo and still see a cheetah, a lion, a porcupine, a platypus, all because of Noah's obedience. There is somebody that's going to be saved by your obedience. There's going to be somebody saved because you're doing something strange that no, nothing, nobody else can do. But most of all, somebody's going to be saved because of your favor. So if there's three things I want you to remember. One, hold on to that favor with God. When God gives you favor, it's better than money. Nobody can touch you. Nobody can harm you. Two, most importantly, when God tells you to do something, no matter... It may seem crazy to man, but it makes a lot of sense to God. God knew the water was coming, so God already had the plan for the boat, the sch schematics and everything. And so what I want you to leave here today, what number two is, don't get discouraged doing something strange that makes other people uh, feel uncomfortable. Do things that makes you listen to God more so that when you do do it, they're looking at you in a whole different light. And number three, stay calm, stay patient in the storm, because when it's all said and done, you're going to rise above the hate. Hey, man, this is your favorite urban missionary here to just give you an encouraging word for the day. Share it with one or two people. You can find me, uh, Urban Sports Missionary on Twitter, and you can find me at Darrell L. Smith on uh, IG. As always, my brother Ken, thank you for the, your time. But most importantly, people, stay kingdom-minded, keep Christ close to your heart, and love your neighbor. Peace.